And then thank you for joining. We'll be getting started in just a minute. Thank you all for joining us. We're going to wait just one more minute to see if we have time to let a few more people in. Good afternoon. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Before we get into the presentation, I just wanted to go over a couple of housekeeping issues. We will be recording the presentation today. So if you're not able to stay through the whole thing, if you've got connection issues, or if you want to share the presentation with somebody else afterwards, you'll get a link and an email right directly to the presentation so you can watch it later. You'll also get a copy of the slides. So if there's a reference in there that you want to go back and take a look at, you're able to do that. We will go straight through the presentation, but if you have questions, you can send them in to us using the question window. That's um, part of the GoToWebinar pop-up that you have there. Just click on, probably looks like a question mark, type in your questions and send it to everybody. I don't know if we'll have time to do questions at the end, but we will capture those and we will get back to you with any questions and the answers that you need later. So, why don't I get started? It looks like we've got a good number of the top seven predictions for dentistry and marketing by 2020. This is a piece that we've put together where we really wanted to look forward and understand what's coming down the pipeline and what do you guys need to do to prepare your practice for it. We're going to be covering seven different trends, talks all about changes in um, economic situation and how that's going to impact you all the way to automation and technology and what you need to be aware of in order to cover yourself there. So the first trend, how about the weak middle class? We're finding that the middle class has been shrinking from 62% to 43% in the past four decades, and it's continuing to shrink. When somebody leaves the middle class, they're generally going down the economic ladder. When we start to look at how this affects things, there's a lot of people who are choosing not to get medical attention. They're not using their regular checkups. They're not doing those things because of the cost, because they actually have to shoulder that burden now. So unless it's a true emergency, people aren't going to the doctor. And when you're a dentist, it's even more the case because there's even less emergencies relating to dental care. What our predictions are, a lot of people are gonna to continue to forego elective procedures such as dental checkups and cleanings. People who work in the gig economy are not going to have dental plans. Those are people who just do freestyle type of work, project here, project there. They don't have a consistent job. They don't have consistent insurance. A lot of the middle class millennials and their new families, they're not going to be able to stay in the pricier, trendier centers. They're going to be moving out to the suburbs. So that's going to mean areas where there's a high density of dentists already, they're going to have even more competition as people are leaving their areas. It also means there might be opportunity for dentists in areas that are not as penetrated as more people come into those locations. So what we recommend is that you want to capture the mind share now. You can't avoid this market shift. So by capturing that share by using search engines, Google My Business, social media, having great review sites, that's going to help people understand the relationship that they have with you, the importance of having that relationship, 
and it's going to keep you top of mind when you're starting to compete against more and more dentists as there's less people who are out there looking for dental services. You're also going to want to make sure you establish a very loyal patient base. And the ways you can do that is sending out frequent reminders about making sure you come in for your appointment, but also recalling people when they haven't made an appointment yet. In constant communication, um, communications that dentists send out are things that they do regularly, like newsletters, posts out on social media. Um, it might be emails to your patients, letting them know what's going on in the office, anything exciting. All of those different pieces that are going to help the patients feel connected to you, that are going to make them feel like you're a trusted friend, those are going to be what you want to continue to do because then when they have to decide what they're going to give up, if they have a relationship with you, they're less likely to give you up. The next trend is that there's a lower trust of facts that's going to require building a trustworthy persona. So what does that really mean? What we see now is fake news is everywhere. 64% of people believe fake news is sowing confusion. Probably not a surprise, it's all in the headlines lately. 23% of people have actually shared up a made up news story, sometimes accidentally, sometimes deliberately. And it's so pervasive that people are ceasing to believe experts and instead are seeking out a version of the truth that conforms to their opinions. For example, vaccines are safe or vaccines are not safe people are going to find the news article that's going to support what it is that they are thinking. An example, another example that's more relevant is flossing. You know, there's articles that flossing is not necessary. There's articles that it is necessary. People choose what news they want to consume. So what can we predict? Well, trust is going to decrease for dentists. They're not going to be looking at you and trusting you just because you have a dental degree. If they trust you, it's because you've given them positive experiences. It's because they look at what you've told them and you can prove what you're doing. And using visual aids and things like that is going to help. So if you say you have a certain treatment plan, showing them how it's actually going to work is actually going to build that trust. The other ways you can help prepare your practice is to use online review sites. That's another way to establish that credibility. You want to ask the patients that come in, if they are happy with your service, to go out and review you somewhere. Put a review out on Google or Yelp or Facebook. Those are the most popular ones where people are getting reviews. You want to make sure you establish your credibility by having articles, blog posts, social media, things that show that you care and that you actually understand and you want to help them. And as I already mentioned, provide evidence to support those treatment plans. Before and after photos are great. Um, videos you could even put up. Use equipment that's gonna showcase to people what it is that they're gonna get when they work with you. So you wanna become trustworthy. And you want to do it because you're presenting yourself, not just because you are a doctor. People aren't going to believe you just because you're a doctor anymore. The third trend is digital content consumption is really going to be led by video. So this probably isn't a surprise to anybody. Because people are always connected, they're always consuming digital content. Young people, old people, moment in line when they're waiting, during commute, right before bed. It's easy to make content. So there's an opportunity for you guys to work on educational videos to help you make you stand out from the crowd. You know, some amazing statistics here. There's 500 million views and 1 million shares of learning related content on YouTube. It's probably a lot more than you expected. And content consumption, is up from 2016. People are consuming content for over 10 hours a day. It's an amazing amount of time spent consuming content. So the predictions for the future. More content is going to be produced than ever before. People are going to continue to have that access throughout the day, especially for video. We're going to start to see it spread out between different platforms. 
But right now you might think of YouTube as the first place for video, but they're getting a lot of competition from videos shared directly through Facebook or a lot of these other platforms that are popping out. So by 2020, we're gonna see content more evenly distributed across multiple channels. You're also gonna see as more people have access to fast streaming data plans, people are gonna use and watch videos a lot more often because they'll be able to get them on their phone without having to worry about all those data overages. So what does that mean for you and your practice? Well, you should consider creating high quality content in an educational video channel on YouTube. There's lots of tools that you can use like iMovie or Camtasia, there's YouTube editing tools or Adobe Spark, which includes um, simple or what you make simple videos and include some stock ready video. Excuse me. When you're doing that, um, you can do topics like how parents can get their kids to brush their teeth or five steps before bedtime for clean baby teeth. Lots of different topics that you can do that are gonna really help support your practice. Another thing you want to do is create content calendars to help keep your ideas and thoughts organized. So think ahead, you know, plan out a few months at a time what content you can you create around holidays, life events, local going on. You can also just do those practical teeth, uh, practical tips on safety, hygiene, lighter teeth, things like that. Now, the fourth trend we're seeing is that paid content will overshadow organic content. So what's the difference? Organic content is pieces that you just type up, that you just post up on your own, that you don't pay anything for. It's like when you post on your own personal channel, except you're gonna post it on your practice channel. It's just news for people who follow you to be able to see. When we talk about paid content, that's going to be if you post something and then Facebook says, hey, would you like to boost this post? You'll be able to get 500 more views if you were to boost the post. It's where you actually have to pay money in order to make it show up in people's feeds. So that's what the difference is. Very similar to how it works on a search engine. You have organic listings on a search engine or you have paid listings on a search engine. So what we're seeing is organic content is becoming less effective and its reach is declining. In 2008, almost all of your followers would have seen your organic posts. In 2012, only about 15% of them would see them. And we're starting to see that in some cases, that percentage is dropping down to about 1% of the followers. And it's because there's so many people out there who are producing content that your pieces are just not being seen as often because you're competing against not only everybody else creating organic content, but a lot more people who are doing paid content right now. There's just so much out there. So our predictions for the future. Most of the social media channels are gonna really be pay to play for a business to actually get their message out there. There's just not gonna be a whole lot of people seeing your content organically, unless they're really going right into your own page. It'll still be out there, but it's just not gonna be shown very often. A lot of things that you will see are native advertisements. These are ads that look like regular content um, and then boosted posts where people, even right now, if you actually posted up something in Facebook, you can boost a post, pay a little bit of money and it's gonna be seen. So we expect that's gonna be much more predominant. So what are our recommendations? Start to learn how this works now. Create some negative, uh, native ads with hyper-targeted audience. So you can target people in certain income brackets, careers, age groups, geolocations. Facebook gives you a lot of opportunity to really target who it is that you want to actually advertise to. You want to test different ads. Understand what works for people. You know, maybe you're better off talking about procedures that you have and showing those before and after pictures. Or maybe your audience responds better to a special offer that you post up every once in a while. So test different things. Understand what it is that they're gonna like. So as you have to rely on it more, you've really nailed down what's working so you don't spend money on things that don't. But at the same time, continue to post up organic content. 
because there are some people who are going to get there. And especially if somebody's going to go do research on you. For example, if I decided I wanted to go look for a dentist and I opened up all of those local dentist office Facebook pages, what I'm going to see when I look at your individual page is all that organic content that's going to tell me who you are, what you're sharing. So don't ignore any of the organic content. Don't think that's going away. But for connecting with people, the paid is also going to be so much more important than it is today. You have to bear with me. I'm losing my voice a little here. <laughs> so the fifth trend. Patients are going to be mobile first, if not mobile only. So we all know that mobile usage is surging. Worldwide, one in four Internet users are mobile only. Those are the people who just don't have a desktop computer at home or a laptop computer at home. They just use their phone for all the information that they need. We know that teens are huge users of smartphones. 78% of them use a smartphone today, and they're all watching videos on them. And as phones become more sophisticated, people don't need laptops and desktops, especially if you think about the different careers that people go into. You know, if you don't have a job where you really need a computer and you're used to using it, there's no reason for you to get one because your phone can do just about anything else that you could need. So some predictions. There will be 6.1 billion smartphone users around the world by 2020. There's going to be more smartphones than there are going to be landline phones. More and more businesses are going to adopt that mobile-first mindset to make sure that their website looks best on a mobile. And if it's not easy to use on a phone, you're going to lose people. So what you really need to do is make sure that when you put together your website, you have thoughtful placement, good amount of content, easy-to-follow call to action, one-tap appointment scheduling, or calling right to the front desk. Just remember, if it's not easy, they're not going to stay. They're just going to go to the next practice in line. Recommendations for your practice. Start with a mobile experience. You really want to make sure you redesign your website every three to five years just to keep up with the modern taste, get rid of any outdated content. So talk to your web host to make sure your website is mobile friendly, it loads quickly, it's optimized for a user, has some friendly buttons and navigations, it formats and looks correctly across all devices. You also want to make sure when you send emails, those come across well on a mobile device in addition to a desktop also. The other thing we recommend is taking advantage of texting. Rather than always relying on postcards or voicemails to remind people about appointments, you can automate everything that goes through a texting service. You can have somebody click link or reply back yes to confirm the appointment, know if they need to have somebody give them a call to reschedule. These are ways to make sure that you're taking advantage of new technology. You're working with people who prefer mobile phones instead of their desktop. And they're just trying to keep you so that you are going to be one of those preferred providers because you're easy to work with that way. So. Next trend is digital fronts are going to be expected. Patient demands are increasing, and a seamless mobile experience can get patients to make that first appointment. Keep in mind, a lot of people who are doing research for a new dentist are doing it after hours, and nobody is manning your phone. So making it easy for people to schedule appointments off of your website or engage with you in different ways is really going to be important. We find that dental practices budget about $500 a month for subscription-based software to help patients schedule appointments, register online, apply for financing options. You also find that a lot of consumers prefer using social media for customer service, more so than they'd like to do phone calls, live chats, or email. But consumers right now, they're very needy. They want a response within four hours. And if they're not hearing back soon, they're going to go somewhere else. But if they have a great experience with you, they're more likely to share that with other people on social media or friends. So, predictions for the future. Consumer patience and attention spans will continue to decrease while their expectations increase. Not a surprise. 
near instant responses and online interactions will be the table stakes. So you need to make sure that you are on top of it. You're responding to people and getting back to them. By 2020, many systems will be integrated and offer such economies of scale that virtually all urban and suburban dental practices will have them. So it's great news because there's great technology coming your way. So recommendations. Try to provide that seamless online experience for patients by being mobile first. Connect your back ends with a seamless front end experience. Integrate your social media channels. So make sure you invest in that integrated system that can how you do, help you do everything. Scheduling, reminders, recalls, marketing campaigns, so nobody slips through the cracks. So finally, the seventh trend. Automation and artificial intelligence will be required to compete. So 80% of businesses are planning to use chatbots by 2020. And chatbot is an automated instant messaging service, usually for customer service, that's shown up on your website. You guys probably have already seen them in many cases. Little thing pops up on the bottom of your screen. Would you like to chat with me now? And a chatbot makes it easier because there's some automated intelligence behind it. So when you ask certain questions, it has answers already put out there. You know, if you ask how long does it take for shipping, the programming behind the chatbot will say, hey, if this is the question they ask, this is the answer that I give them. And it starts to answer questions without having to have a live person at the other end until they get to a point where they can't answer the question. So what are we seeing now? We're at the beginning of what's becoming known as the fourth industrial revolution. Lots more um, robots in the factories than there ever have been. A lot of way to automate, lots of ways to automate things online. Many companies are already using email automation, ad placement, subscription software to handle tasks. But the amount of behind the scenes work to required to run a business is increasing because there's so much more to do. So we have to embrace the automation to meet up with those demands without having to increase our staff time. So our predictions. By 2020, 78% of US small businesses will be using cloud computing. 80% of those businesses have started to or plan to use a chatbot. By 2020, practices that make use of increasingly sophisticated tools to save time and automate more. And people will need to train staff to monitor the artificial intelligence tools correctly. So what do we recommend for your practice? Automate everything you can. You can implement an automated suite for practice management, marketing, outreach. Doing so is gonna help you be more speedy, accurate, decrease the need for paperwork, allow you to focus on other areas of the company. You also want to hire and train tech-savvy staff who can help you adapt that new software easily. You know, using the automated solutions for messaging, handling those inquiries will actually take some of that off of your plate. But your office staff needs to transition in knowing how to go from answering phones to actually participating in those real-time text conversations over your computer. So if somebody answers a question, the chat box can't answer it, a live person can jump in. Tying it all together, we're only talking a couple years in the future. We're not talking out 10 years, so these things are coming. It's gonna be fast, it's gonna be here soon, and many of these things you can get started with today. So keep in mind, people are consuming more content. There's more content being produced every single day. So you need to stay competitive, you need to stand out using educational articles, starting to create videos of your own, posting up on YouTube, sharing them out via your social media channels or on your website. Those are the things that's gonna help you stand out. Wanna look at artificial intelligence to see if there's anything that you can take advantage of, such as chat box, backend scheduling, marketing systems that are gonna help you realize that cost savings, automating your pre-call and reminder phone calls, you also want to try to make sure your patient experience is seamless. No matter how they talk to you, where they come from, you want to make sure they have a good, 
consistent experience. They can go from one system into another one and it seems like it's the same thing. You want to just make it easier for them to do business with you, be loyal to you, want to keep coming back to you. And that's our presentation for today. So if you would like more information about those seven predictions that we've made, there's actually a white paper. I know you can't click here, but when you get the slides, you'll be able to click there and you can download the white paper right from there. We are pro sites. Um, we do website design, pay-per-click search engine. We also have patient recalls and reminders. So if you want more information about what we can offer you, there should be a survey that pops up when you guys close out the window. You can always check that box and somebody will get back to you and answer any questions. And you're also welcome to send any questions in here and we'll respond to those after. I'd like to thank everybody for joining me today. I'm so glad my voice held out through this presentation. And I hope you guys all have a great year. Thank you.